Sony A6000 or the Alpha 6500? Let's find out. What is good YouTube? It's that one camera guy back at it again with another shooting vlog for you. On Friday, April 28th, I went out to go shoot some high school baseball. Typically, when I go out to these events to go shoot, I tend to have a particular focus. So I wanted to do more of a hands-on comparison with the Sony Alpha 6000 and the Alpha 6500 for shooting sports. So things I specifically would use them for, which is to take photos and to record some slow motion video. I've mentioned in the past before that the Sony Alpha 6000 is very formidable compared to the Alpha 6500. Its autofocusing performance is really good. The only little things it's missing is the higher frames, uh, frame rate recording and also the 4K. So maybe if you do a lot of general sports photography, nothing specifically professional, then I think the Alpha 6000 is a really good option. While I was out there, I also took the Sony FE 2X teleconverter and used it with the Sony 7200 G Master. I haven't really had a lot of opportunities to use this converter, and with the Sony A9 arriving next month, I needed to know how good the autofocus and image quality would be with this attachment. At this time, the only native 300 millimeter lens is the Sony uh, 70 to 300 that goes up to 5.6, which I do own. And there's also the up and coming Sony 100 to 400 G Master, which will arrive soon as well. I definitely want to do some hands on comparisons with the 7200 G Master plus 2X teleconverter versus the Sony 100 to 400 G Master because both of those lenses with the combination on the, the 7200 will be at 400 at 5.6. I brought with me to the baseball game, you guessed it, the new Peak Design bag that I got, the 30 liter version from recommendations from Jason Vong. Honestly, I'm really starting to like the bag and it lo looks really good and I, I'm gaining some attachment to it. The only thing is I need to get a handle on the compartments, which you can see in the video. There's times I don't know what might be in one pocket or the other pocket and it just happens to be my organization skills. I just need to get things figured out, but I tend to switch things out of my bag all the time, so it gets kind of confusing. So hopefully that will get worked out eventually. As far as shooting, I didn't use the Makey grip from, for the Sony Alpha 6500 and it just happened to be the fact that I brought that grip with me but I didn't have a grip for the Alpha 6000. And to make the evaluation or comparison fair, I decided not to put the grip at all. Um, I know it sounds kind of silly, but I just wanted it to be compared, a uh, very fair comparison between the two cameras. Something I really got to mention is that the 2X teleconverter is actually really nice. From the spot that I was in in the video, if you can see in the B-roll shot, I was, I'm pretty far away from first, second, and third base. Now, home base is, is within reach, but uh, those ranges are very far, and a lot of action happens in those areas. And the outfield, not so much. You know, once in a while, you'll see something interesting happen there. But with, even with the 2X teleconverter, I could frame my subject pretty well uh, using uh, the 2X teleconverter. So, in terms of effective reach, using the APS-C sensor on the Sony E-mount system, you get pretty much a 1.5 times 2 times 200 millimeter um, multiplication, which gives you an effective reach of 600 millimeters, which really isn't that bad at all, which is really nice. Autofocus is going to be a little bit of a contention of an issue, but in terms of my initial impression, the extender did a really good job, the autofocuses did pretty good. Um, I didn't notice it in the viewfinder, but it did track the subject just fine. There is only one issue, and it's a typical issue that you get when you add an extender, in this case like a 2x extender, is that you get noticeable shake in the actual lens. Now here's something really cool. Because I did buy the uh, eye viewfinder piece, the EVF cup that goes around your eye on the Alpha 6500, it helped tremendously with balancing the camera out, not only helping it, me record video easier, but just keeping it balanced a little bit better. But I did experience shake on both of them with video, uh, um, with the actual autofocus uh, in there. And to some degree, I probably should have increased my shutter speed a little bit higher, but I felt I was already at a good enough speed that it shouldn't have been an issue in terms of, uh, in terms of uh, autofocus issues. In video autofocus, everything looked all right. There was a couple of hiccup situations where there was difficulties with it autofocusing. And I don't know if it's the fact that I'm shooting through a fence or not, but um, 
it worked okay. I'm not saying it worked perfectly. Natively, without the extender, it... Let's just put it this way. Without the extender, it works a lot better. With the extender, it's a little slower. It feels just a tad bit slower. With slow motion, when you compare the A6000 versus the Alpha 6500, one big difference between the two is that with slow motion, you get... 60 frames per second on the uh, Alpha 6000 and, si and 120 frames per second on the Alpha 6500. So when I bring that into Premiere Pro, or basically I do 40% of the original speed with the A6000 and 20% of the original speed on the Alpha 6500, which you can see in the examples, you decide which one looks okay to you. I think even the 60p is actually pretty good. And I think if you do a little bit of frame blending and motion bl um, motion and frame blending with After Effects, I think you can slow down the A6000 footage just a smidge more uh, and get a little more slow motion out of it. Image quality is probably the area I have the most contention with. And I definitely am gonna do some more tests, which you'll find in my next vlog because that hasn't been fully edited yet. Um, but the resulting images that I got were actually slightly soft and um, they looked misfocused in my opinion. And you can also notice some strange, aberra strange aberrations and things inside of the actual image uh, that I'm, I'm guessing is a result of actually using the extender, which is what I've read online typically happens. So any type of imperfections the lens has at an extender will definitely magnify those imperfections. Other than that, um, you know, my, my use of the camera is very different from everybody else. And most of my work goes online. I don't really print stuff out. Um, and I'm not shooting professionally. And I've mentioned this before in a video. I just kind of shoot uh, sports as a, something for my education, my own passion, uh, own hobby, really. And... After processing the images to my liking, I was I was pretty much okay with the resulting images, but the softness can be a bothersome issue. So uh, my next vlog will definitely take a, a closer look at that. So my thoughts: the Sony Alpha 6000 versus the Alpha 6500. I think if you do a lot of general sports photography of local teams, maybe you're a parent and your kid plays sports and you want to get some really good action snapshots of them then I think the Alpha 6000 is a great uh, camera to go with. You probably don't really need the Alpha 6500 unless you need specifically 4K. And then if you get the Alpha 6000, you can save the money and use that money to buy a better glass like the 7200 F4, the 7300, or even if you have enough cash, get the 7200 G Master, which is probably what I would recommend you get. In terms of frame buffer and performance, if you don't plan on shooting raw, the Alpha 6000 is great. I know that in one instance while I was out shooting, I shot at, I shot in raw and the athlete, the baseball player was almost getting to home base and I decided the motor drive at the very last moment, the peak moment, but my motor drive kind of, my, my frames had, had stopped right before they even got to the actual home base. Like one more step and they'd be at home base and the camera stopped, shoot, take, stopped firing in raw. So the Alpha 6000's raw buffer is very limited. You can get away with it if you time your shots uh, uh, specifically. It's definitely usable. But if you are worried about that kind of thing and you want to shoot in raw, then you're going to want to consider the Alpha 6500, which has a much deeper buffer. So just keep that in the back of your mind if it's something you want to do and you're debating on these cameras. If you need the buffer, the raw buffer, get the A6500. If you don't care and you just want to use JPEG, then the A6000 is perfectly fine. So in my next vlog, I will take you to a track meet that I went to in Corcoran. And what's really funny is that since Sony didn't send me the Sony A9 or took me out to go check out the Sony A9, I have to go to an actual track meet and test out the Alpha 6500 and, and this teleconverter. So, And by the way, I also test out the Sony 18-105 F4 in photography, so I, I took it out for sports photos. You'll be pleasantly surprised with that lens. Folks, if you're curious about any of the gear that I mentioned on this channel, or sorry, in this video, and you wanna support the work that I do, consider checking out my affiliate links, and also my gear kit links that will show exactly the gear that I'm currently using. And if you haven't gotten enough of me already, you can go ahead and click somewhere over here to see another video from me, and also click somewhere over here to subscribe. And don't forget to activate the little bell to find out when the next video happens. And with that said, I'm your host, That One Camera Guy, and I'll catch you on the next video. Bye.